Walking the Black Love Matters with a service of therapy session for figuring out adulthood. Loving each other. I find her in a Brock and Michelle. Or Jay-Z and Beyonce. Who is you? I'm Nero. And I'm Nyambi. And this is episode 372, y'all. Hey. Be sure to leave one, two, three, four, five star rate and review on Apple Podcasts and on Stitcher and follow us on all forms of social media at Black Love Matters. It's one of my favorite days of the week. It's shout out Friday. Hey, How y'all shout doing? Out Friday. Happy Friday. What's going on with you, baby? Hit it. We got to let this one play a little long out of respect. Okay. Let's turn it down a little bit so they won't flag us. They won't flag us all the way. Mm -hmm. Well, y'all, you got the news yesterday evening, depending on what coast you sat at around dinner or you was getting ready for bed. The pioneering Hollywood icon. Cicely Tyson has died at 96 and she went on to be with the ancestors. <sighs> this was a hard one, wasn't it? It was. So Emmy and Tony Award winning actress Cicely Tyson, who distinguished herself in theater, film, and television, died Thursday afternoon. As I said before, she was 96. Throughout her career, she refused to play drug addicts, prostitutes, maids, roles that she saw demeaning of black women. But when a good part came along, she grabbed that mother, I ain't gonna cuss it was his mother Tyson, and tore it up. Um, just a couple highlights. On stage, she was the, on, the original, on the original 1961 off-Broadway production of Jean um, Gennett's The Blacks. And decades later, she won a Tony for starring in the role on the revival of The Trip to Bountiful. In television, she um, was one of the first recurring roles for black women in a drama series on East Side, West Side. And the actress later won two much-deserved Emmys for 1974's memorable the autobiography of Miss Jane Pittman. Mm. She was nominated a total of 16 times in her career, also winning for supporting actress in 1994 for the adaption of the oldest living Confederate widow tells all. She was nominated five times for guest actress drama, including for How to Get Away with Murder. Tyson also received an Oscar nomination in 1973 for Martin Ritz drama Sounder um, and an honorary Oscar in 2018. Uh, one fact that a lot of folks don't talk about, uh, Ms. Tyson also was one of the founding members of the Dance Theater of Harlem in 1960. Mm. We miss you, Ms. Tyson. Mm. Why did her? I know Ms. Tyson was 96. Because we wanted her to live to 120. Forever. Forever. Just indefinite. Yes. And it was so unexpected. It was. It was. It was unexpected, but it was expected. Like I said, she was 96, but I didn't think me minding my business on the Thursday. So, what the fuck Betty White ass at? Don't you, don't even, it's certain people I don't even want you to speak their names up. Because let's just be. What you bring to the film, now? I'm, I'm, I'm thinking either my mama's sweet potato pie. Okay. Or... Peach cobbler. I was thinking desserts too. I know someone asked us on Instagram. They told us they're bringing some macaroni and cheese to mm. the um, few. I think I'm gonna bring a caramel cake and a case of water. Okay. Because I know it's gonna be, you know, we need to be social distancing, but it's good to keep the water going and a good old southern caramel cr uh, caramel cake. Y'all know the caramel when you cut into it and the crunch a little bit mm -hmm. and it's sealed and then it's that moist yellow cake on the inside. Yes. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna Ooh. get for. What's your what's your favorite Cicely Tyson moment? Or movie or anything. When you think of her, what you be thinking about? I think of her on how to get away with murder. What? And she'd be like, Why that? Because whenever she called Annalise King anime. An anime? <laughs> anime. I'd be like, get up. First of all, Cicely Tyson has been paying a grandmother since she's been 29. Mm -hmm. Let's let's start right there. So Low key, I got to give it up for the um, autobiography of Miss Jane Pittman. You know, that's always a good one. You know, I that's think everybody's go to. I think I got to give it up for that. Like, she literally played from like what early twenties to hundred and ten in one movie when she was thirty. What? Take that, Mandy Moore. This is us. And I also really like to add uh, roots. <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> For, for the Shut original out. listeners, Shut out. y'all know about Roots and me. Why are you doing this? Why are you go back to Roots? Because 
She kept a check coming, didn't she? She did. And then Tyler Perry's with an S. Tyler Perry. Then revived her career yeah. and put her ass in everyone else. He ain't revived he, he just told us what we need to be watching and what we need to be doing. Mm-hmm. Ain't nobody mad at it. Mm. Well, we miss you, Mrs. Tyson. Again, take your rest. I know the ancestors um, welcomed you with um, open arms. Yes. When you know you did enough on this earth. But 2020, 2021, is, is this, or is this what it is to get older? Like, what is happening? I don't know. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Oh my goodness! Let me see what else is going. You got anything else to say about Miss Tyson, the mm. legend? No, we gotta let the rest of this love bath for a long. What you gonna because... give it a little bit? I'm gonna go ahead. You, you think I can find the autobiography of Jane Pittman on Amazon? Probably not. It's I'm probably sold out it. now. I'm talking about just to rent it. To oh, watch it. you just want to rent it? Yeah, just. To yeah, you can probably it. find it now. Because okay. Amazon, you know, they all about capitalism. Oh yeah, I'm sure Jeff Bezos went and got it out his own vault. Mm-hmm. Let me see. What else? Well, my. Uh, how am I supposed to move through that? I don't know. So, what's going to do a podcast? Oh, what now? What's going to do one? I mean, it do hit the culture hard. Mm-hmm. But my week was was nice. Like I said, y'all know I was off. It was just low key and reflective. I don't even have like huge high points to talk about. I don't have like any shows I watch. But it was just nice to just slow my body down. So whoever's listening, if y'all need to break, sometimes you just need a break just to ease into stuff and just to be just to be easy. Um, something that I did notice this week that's happening near um, I know we haven't talked about it, but you see these res- restrictions lifting in the Bay. Mm-hmm. Um, basically outdoor dining is allowed in, yes. in the North Bay, I should say, and like salons and, um, like what is it called? Grooming places yes. are now open with of course precaution. I'm sure like reduced capacity and all those things. I'm about to go get my feet done. I, that, honestly, that's one thing I am craving to get my toes done. Like I would love to get my nails done, but that's not necessarily a priority, but I do I would love someone to um what they say scrub on Elmira's feet. Yes. Elmira somebody need to work on Elmira's feet. feet. <laughs> I would I would appreciate if someone work on Elmira's feet. Somebody need to work on my yambi feet. Yes. That's probably going to be the most thing I'm going to do. I might eat outside. I'm still a takeout to go. Like, I still don't like It's too close quarters in San Francisco you know, for me. All they got to do is I, I just need them to go right into February. And our uh, date night is going to be outside dining. Oh, my goodness. And I'm going <laughs> to hold my breath the whole time. <laughs> it's going to be outside Ooh, dining. Oh, my Lord. Ooh, I don't because know. Because as soon as we get it, it's gonna be, they're going to close it right back down. I think we only did outdoor dining once. <laughs> and I think I held my breath the whole time. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes. How, did, how did you? And it was literally not a, that we were spaced appropriately. We were, and it still made me feel uncomfortable. How did you feel about that outing? Did you enjoy it? Yeah, it was so enjoy- weird, didn't it? I enjoyed it. Uh huh. It was fun. Was it worth it? Yes, it was. Yes. Did it feel weird when we did it? There's some type of normalcy. I, I don't care if I got to wear a bubble coat outside. I'm gonna wear that fucking bubble coat. And you better order a hot toddy because oh date night we going out to eat, baby. Oh. Can we? How about we go pick it up? And we pop the trunk of the car. No. I mean, the truck. And we sit in the truck. No. I'm going to go find the most fanciest white tablecloth. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> with the cl- If try this waiter come by me, I, I hope my breath. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to just bring a post-it note write everything down. I'm just point to what I want. Yes, you about to. Like I said, you better order a hot toddy because we're going to be outside with the bubble coats. Um, but also, in the midst of the restrictions lifting in the bay a little bit, did you hear about this thing about we need to double mask up? Did you mm-hmm. hear about this debate that's going on? So, allegedly, there's a debate whether America should be encouraged to wear two masks at the same time or whether high end masks. Um, typically reserved for healthcare workers should be made available to the public. Um, there's some concern about amongst officials that are encouraging the widespread use of N95s um, because like they hurt a little bit more when you put them on. They think people don't wear them. Did you hear about that? I've been hearing a lot. I, heard, I yeah. want to say it was on the CDC website. I think they're really um, firming up. It has to be at minimum three layers because I think folks were getting a little comfortable in just doing like the little bandana cloths mm-hmm. or just the little what's those things run them things you wear sometimes yeah, like neck gaiter. I, I don't I don't think those are doing enough. I've always wore some type of mask. I've honestly I've always worn in ninety five mask. I am even wearing in ninety five since since. De- since March. And <laughs> I've recently I've started doubling my mask. Remember when I was telling you about my eye appointment? Mm-hmm. Ever since I went to that eye appointment, they made me put on three masks. I've been wearing two masks. 
Because the only time I wore two masks is when we went to Michigan. Yeah, the dentist be wearing like three masks, too. So. Yeah, and I'm like, mm, if you wearing the th- But I got glasses on. You put something damn. Uh, you got to layer them glasses right. There's only certain pairs I can wear with my mask. Because that's why I, cause I, I got a lot of glasses, y'all. And I usually rotate them. But now it's only like two or three pair I can wear that don't fog up because I can like place the mask under my glasses. I wasn't going to say fog up. I was going to say because you got so many ad masks, they be pulling on your ear and your glasses start falling. Oh, so for the one, the N95, the filter ones, I fold up the string and put them in and only use the big cloth mask on the outside oh. to help. So I use the other mask as like filters. Mm. And then the, whatever the mask is on top, that's what go behind my Actually, ear. Actually, we still be getting some fancy mask. I'm paid. Where, where are mask? I you better them. be getting them. But did you hear? You ain't heard nothing about that. Mm-hmm. Have y'all heard about that? I've heard. I, I want, I'm, I'm assuming that they just want us to make sure it's the three layers. But I've been hearing a lot of folks saying double mask up, and I've been to more than a couple places, especially medical facilities where they're yeah. wearing double and triple masks. Well, mm-hmm. triple for my eye doctor. That, you said the dentist, they had three layers on? Yep. Three so, masks and a face shield. And a face shield. Come on. That's why I was like, y'all, y'all can go ahead and work in my mouth then, because y'all got all these damn masks. And that's- <laughs> <laughs> For y'all don't know near I hate the dentist I hate the motherfucking dentist Did you even tell them About the dentist Did you tell them What you're doing At the dentist I uh, know Are you gonna tell them No <laughs> Why not Because it, Because Never mind <laughs> Now I'm gonna tell you Once it's over yes. he, Why he at the dentist I, I support him Just know that um, also, did you hear about this news? Also in the Bay, in San Francisco, is going to rename 44 schools. So the San Francisco Board of Education has decided to kick um, some presidents' names off the public school buildings um, in the city um, in an apparent bid to change racism and oppression. The school recently approved the resolution, as I said, uh, to rename 44 of the 125 schools in this district because their names honor people with ties to slavery, racism, genocide, and um, other kinds of oppression. Mm. Um, among those names um, will, that will be removed from schools in San Francisco are former president and slave owner George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, as well as Abraham Lincoln, um, who the committee leading the renaming efforts say mistreated Native Americans during his administration. Mm. Right Shout out to the Bay. Yeah, they said they getting the presidents off of there. Yeah. Meanwhile, folks down in Mississippi and in the De- Delta who get an attitude when we literally take Confederate, yeah, racist, white supremacist monuments down. San Francisco was like, guess what? Thank you, George, mm-hmm. for your thoughts and Actually, consideration. They could have just the added one more name. Just made it George Washington Carver. Oh. That's true. They could have. Come on. So I'm actually going to dig more into it because I'm curious of what the names are going to be mm-hmm. um, that they're going to put in um, instead. I know they said they're going to do people of color, Native American. So I, I'm very, um, or indigenous people, I should say. So I'm super interested in. Last thing. I know I said I didn't um, have any movies or anything. This is not even a good movie. This was just something I had on in the background. It's on Hulu and maybe Amazon, but I know it's on Hulu. It's called The Owners. And you know who playing it? Who? Ariana Stark. Oh. What's her name? Macy something? Yeah, Macy. So whoever played Ariana Stark play in it, and it's absolutely madness. I'm not sure if it has a plot, rhyme, or reasoning, but if you're looking for a gory thriller, you remember that movie about that took place in Detroit on that blind man? Mm-hmm. And then people broke in? Yes. Hush or don't say nothing or yeah. quiet? This is like the European version of it. Oh my gosh, that was even better. No, I, th- I think the one on Detroit was the best one. Um, the one that was took place on East Side of Detroit was the be- better, yeah. but it's still that energy of it. But think European Did Nia in, go see that movie with us? in the um, countryside. I don't know. I, I thought we saw it together. I thought Nia was there too. Maybe. Why? What are you reflecting on? No, because I was just trying to remember. I'm looking at our dog who putting her um, Mabel is so much. She's literally she got tons of blankets and beds all over this house. And sometimes she take her bed, blanket off the bed, y'all, because she get warm. And we recording a podcast, so we she got her bed and blanket. Do you know she literally just kicked her blanket back in her bed and about to throw it over here and go to sleep? She what should. is our dog? I don't know. She thinks she's something, huh? Yeah. Oh, my Lord. Um, But if y'all looking for a quick thriller kiki that ain't for the kids, if you're just looking for something gory, take your mind off the world, I recommend doing that. But other than that, y'all, like, I'm super low-key, like, I hope I sound more relaxed. That's literally what I just wanted to do this week. Just relax, reflect. And um, today, like I said, I took Monday through Thursday off. So I'll be working today. I only did work today. So I won't have to come in a bunch of emails on Monday. Um, So my goal is to wrap everything up on Friday so I can start Monday fresh. Mm. Because, you know, folks stop working at my job around 1, 2 o'clock. So like even if I come in running by 1, 2 o'clock, 
it'll be quiet and then I can kind of go through, update everything I need to update and go from there. That's what's, up. what's going on with you now? Well, you know, I'm excited. I got to hit some air horns. That's how I say it. Me and Nia, when me and Nia talk, we talk about you and your use of that soundboard. I don't care. I don't care. Have Y'all you talked f- to anyone about that soundboard? No. Okay. Maybe NG. She hit me up. Did she tell you slow down? No. Oh, okay. no, I don't care. Okay, she it's, did then. She probably did. But, she pro- <laughs> but I don't care. She probably did. Jimmy don't crack corn. Oh my god. And I don't care. Um, I just submitted my book proposal to my agent. My finger snaps not good enough. No, it ain't. I just submitted my book proposal to my agent. Congratulations. Uh, I just finished up a couple of large projects that I've been working on the past couple of months. Congratulations. Got, and I'm off on Friday. Ooh, wait, the day I go back to work. Mm-hmm. Niggas, I am free. Wait, the day I go back. I am off. Wait. I'm off. The day I go back. I'm off. I don't think I like it. <laughs> I'm off. Okay. So... As y'all know, I've been talking about this book proposal since what, November? Yes. It is done. Look at God. All 46 pages. Mm-hmm. Done. Yeah. Sent to the uh, 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 literary agent. She's happy with it. She said, This is perfect. How do you know she? Oh, I was like, How do you know she's happy because with it? Because mm. she sent me an email back and it's like, This is perfect. You've been working done. on it. I've been me working and, on it. Me and Mabel been bitch. waiting for you to come on back to us. I've been working on that bitch so long, so hard. Y'all don't understand. Mm-hmm. That bitch is done. I know. Uh, working on these projects mm-hmm. while trying to uh, while trying to um, do this book proposal. It's been hard as hell. Mm-hmm. But these projects is wrapped up, and I can start sending my invoices to these people. Send your invoices. I can get that money, that Shh. coinage. Hey. I'm done. So I'm just excited. Mm-hmm. I feel like a, a a weight was just lifted off of me because, you know, working on something and like having these deadlines and things of that sort and trying to make sure you hit them and, you know, because you got money on the line and shit like that. Like, yeah. I am ecstatic. I'm happy. And I can't wait till this book gets sold. Yeah. New York Times bestseller. I might have to uh, go ahead and out us so y'all niggas. Oh, can oh, book. now we get out it because near him. <laughs> now, now near him. Near him talking about hello, everyone. <laughs> hello, hello, Lord. This is your humble servant. <laughs> hello, is, Black Love Matters community. Go this buy is me. my book. I is me. Me is me. Go buy my book. That's just like a Negro. <laughs> hey. Who said I wanted to? <laughs> Who said I wanted to be outed? I'm just fucking around. No, he not. Mm. He's so not. I am. This him. Hello, Black Look, Love Matters. Anything to have a New York Times bestseller. So I got to pull all the communities together. Yeah, you got to pull all our communities. Y'all everybody. don't say everybody. Look, we need everybody to reach actually, one teacher. I need to start getting a list. All the librarians. <laughs> exactly. Broke That's why we got to get, cre- we gotta get creative. We got to get all the librarians. All the librarians. If you're at- not a librarian, we got to get you. Give us your information to your city library right. so we can request it. Do you it. got a health center? Do you got one of those? What is it called? Them health centers? Some community centers. The community centers. Anywhere that them. need a book. Request it. If you can't buy it, book. you better request it. That you right. Buy two, three copies. Yeah. Buy them from Amazon, Barnes and Noble, uh-huh. all them bitches, so I can get this Is New York Times bestseller. Yeah. Okay, I don't know how that works. I don't know how you go from book to Audible. Oh, easy. It I just naturally book. happens. Yeah. Or? Oh, okay. It's a part of it. So oh, they, okay. they, because my home girl, she did it for her. They, they initially audition you for it, mm. and then if they feel like you're a good read for it, they'll do it. Oh. But if not, like, but uh, they say no. I can't see Audible turning nobody down. That's the Amazon. Not in. Audible, but like oh. the the publisher. Gotcha. So the publisher be like, nah, we don't think your voice is good. Like we gonna have somebody else. Oh my it. god, listen to your voice. How you gonna do exactly? Yours? How you gonna talk about you? <clears throat> Tell me the intro. It was a dark. Oh, I'm all set. Night. I'm all set. <laughs> it was a dark, and I already got my own sound effects. <gasps> Please don't put no sound effects in my book. <laughs> If I'm walking Mabel and I hear a sound effect in the audible, it's going to be a wrap. It's a dark, stormy night. (laughs) (laughs) Leaves rustling. (laughs) So is you getting the AMSR now? I don't know. I don't know. But I'm excited, though. I'm excited for it. And yeah, like I feel like a a weight was just lifted off of me. All this stuff was done before the end of the month. So there's two more days left. That's your goal. And there's like all this shit got to be done. So I'm just excited. I'm excited for these other things that I got doing, doing. And it's just dope. And like I said, yeah, I'm, I'm about to put out a signal, a bird call or something. 
near I'm gonna find a way to get y'all connected. But also y'all are family. Right. So I feel like they if you will release a book, we gotta share it with the the crew and the family. Yeah, we'll see. Oh <laughs> Oh near such a cancer. Those who know who know. If you know, you know. Why are you so petty? <laughs> Don't worry. You can find near him. You gonna find Naomi. You show like <laughs> <laughs> Naomi paid that money to get her shit scrubbed off the internet. I'm done. So <laughs> what? Shut up. Uh, <laughs> Who is Naomi? Exactly. That's gonna be named my memoir. <laughs> Who is she? <laughs> Where is she at? All right. Uh, what else is going on? Shout out to Starbucks. Uh, CEO Roz Brewer, who will be the new CEO of Walgreens. Uh-huh. Round of applause for that. Uh, will be and she is the only black female CEO in a Fortune 500 company. Wow. What the f- the only fir- the, the only, only black? The only black. Female? Only black female Fortune 500. Her ascension to CEO uh will become uh, will make her the only black female, uh, the only black woman to currently lead a Fortune 500 company. She will only uh she will be only the Third in history, Jeez. following Ursula Burns, uh, who was the helm, uh, who was at the helm of Xerox from 2009 to 2016, and Bed Bath Beyond interim a CEO Mary Winston, who led the housewares, uh, who led the housewares company for six months. That shout out to her. Shout out to Miss Ross Brewer, mm-hmm. Black Excellence. Absolutely, that makes me excited. I figured you, I figured you was gonna talk about it because I know you always about your businesses and all that type of stuff. Yes. So like that brought you joy. How'd you feel when you? Yes, I know she was like. What? Hey. Hey. I know she was happy. I got that shit. Look, I'm hell yeah. I leave Starbucks. The see, well, Starbucks should have made her the CEO then. Exactly. I'm surprised she ain't been get the CEO. I'm sure for a couple other companies ain't gonna get her. So, hell. Deuces. You see, <laughs> well, you know, CEOs bounce around. When you get to that level, they literally just bounce around. Yeah, they, they just get move today. from one company to another. Just company. to get up to the ladder higher and higher. So good right. for her. So yeah. Other than that, it's cold as hell here in the bay. It is cold. It's Me raining. and Mabel been walking in the rain. Like, every I'm day. and Mabel been arguing. How we been arguing? So I guess uh, allegedly Mabel pooped um, outside Niambi, the elevator. Yeah, outside the elevator. According to Nyambi. She was bad, y'all. You going to tell the story? <laughs> I don't know the story. Well, it was pouring rain, windstorm. I got Mabel. We put on her rain boots. We put on her raincoat. I did the same, geared up. We went in that rain. We was out there for 25 minutes. She peed a couple times, but no poop. We got on the elevator, got off the elevator. As soon as she got in front, she called herself. She got to go poop now. I was out done. And for y'all who don't know, Mabel hates wetness. She hate for a dog. She hates being wet. She don't want to be around it. She don't like to go out in the rain. As soon as I took her out in the rain, she was looking at me like we entered the um, fifth circle of hell. And she didn't know what to do. <laughs> did, when you took her out at midday near him, did she pull back? Like, or did she walk forward? Like, she was no, pulling. She, pulled back. she was pulling me like, I don't want to do this. But that's cool, though, because I got something for that ass. What you got it's for? It's called it? a prong collar. Oh, my God, near him. <laughs> Are you okay? No. No, you ain't okay. No, I'm okay. Okay. She gonna be okay too. How did you get her to come midday? Oh, I said, bring your ass. Oh. And I said, she... get your ass over oh, here. My... And she was like, oh, okay, okay, okay. She said she walking around. Yeah, because she thought she thought I was fucking around. Because oh at first she's like, no, I ain't come. I said, get your ass over she here. She didn't even want to come outside because yeah. we um near him held up the coat and she looked at him like, no ma'am. Who coming to this coat? Mm-hmm. Ain't nobody coming to this coat. But exactly. Yeah. So she is definitely a Cali dog. Exactly. I don't know what she gonna do if we ever go to Detroit. She ain't. She gonna be constipated. She gonna be all for She can't shit in my house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, your mama put her out. Ooh, you know how much, you everybody know much gonna put her out. You know the carpets in that house. It ain't no bare ground. I ain't nowhere actually for her to go because that's actually, the thing. Maybe ain't going no carpet. She need to go somewhere actually, hard and cold. Actually, there ain't no carpets in your house. So she just gonna be looking. She gonna find one corner in front of the front door. <laughs> Ooh-wee. So yeah, I hit her with that get your ass over here, and she's like, "Okay, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. I'm fucking around." So yeah, that's all the things that's going on. Okay. What else we got? Oh, well, a shout out Friday. I know okay. we, we're not necessarily gonna have pillow talk today. We're gonna go on a shout out Friday because we know there's a lot of like comments and stuff in them. So we're gonna use the questions from there to be kind of our pillow talk and all that good stuff. Okay. Speaking of N95, I got this pimple I need to work on. Oh, see with this macne. They call it maskney. You got to wash your face really good. Mm. 
Like you can't do. I don't even when I wear my mask for long for longer periods of time, more than just taking Mabel out. If I wear my mask for more than an hour a day, I have to actually transition to do double washing. Mm. So I have to do like an oil based cleanser. Then I got to do my real cleanser on top of that. And then when I go out to wear my mask, I have to put on like heavier creams on my face mm. to act as like a barrier. Like I found, you know, that company butter. Yeah. I think we highlighted a couple Fridays ago. They have shea butter, and I use that shea butter if I know I'm using my mask mm. because the shea butter acts as like a barrier, a barrier too. Um, but it doesn't clog my pore like an aquapore or something would. Gotcha. And that's what saved me from like um, mac macne. That's what they call it, maskne. Mac- gotcha. Acne from no mask. Then also, you know, if I wear my mask twice, I try to wear them like a couple times before I toss them. I spray the inside of my mask with Lysol too. Mm. Um, to kill whatever little germs that may be on the surface. Because usually I go like hours between mm-hmm. wearing masks. So it's enough time to dry, take some of the germs. And I think that's been helpful. Do you do that? No. Oh, okay. Well, that's why you got that, that herpes. That, that. What? What you got on your face? Shout out Friday. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go into the Apple podcast. Uh, what do people got to do to send a shout out? Near them just going quick. Near I'm tired, y'all. If y'all can't tell, near I'm tired. I am tired. So this episode ain't going to be as long as it normally is. But I told them that we got to still go through the motions. Because I was like, ain't we off? Ain't we not? Off? Yeah, I'm oh. off, but we not off yet. Oh, okay. We're going to be off sometime in March for spring. So uh, comments, questions, uh, blacklovematters at gmail.com. You know, we're always looking for those ratings on Apple Podcasts. Share with your friends. Share with your mama. Get your man's phone. Get your side get boots everybody. phone. Get everybody. You know, yeah. I seen one Instagram post and somebody was like, next time your man piss, piss you off, just be like, I should have listened to my side nigga, what he said about you. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, what would you say? I would say, well, what the nigga say? Hey, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. It was like, my side nigga was right about you. <laughs> <laughs> what he say? <laughs> <laughs> it, did he got money on his rent? <laughs> oh, okay. Come on, Daryl. Sure. Come on, generational wealth. Exactly. <laughs> What's it called? Community. Yes. Uh, cooperative economics. Right. We take it back to the old days, the original days. What they, what they say? Uh, they say all these are kids. The <laughs> women. The village. Look, the women belong to every to, to the village. The, oh, not the women. <laughs> the women belong to the village. You try. Is this the equivalent to the bitches belong to the streets? I don't know what you're talking about there. You do. Speaking of people belonging to the streets, um, I started rewatching Scandal, <laughs> and. <laughs> I encourage everyone to go back and rewatch it. That first season still was really good about the the individual cases, Mm -hmm. but I'm still on Kerry Washington and on press and curl outfits. And there's so many episodes about just adultery and women hoeing and men hoeing. Mm. But watching it again has brought me some joy. I'm sorry. Go ahead. What was you saying? No, I said speaking of bitches in the street. Yeah. Oh, Olivia and Fitz. Those two got on my nerves. They got on my nerves even more the second go around because they keep skiddly daddling in the streets where he knew he ain't want to fuck with Melly way back when when he found out she was fucking that other nigga and he should have broke up with Melly when he was running for fucking president. Oh. That's when he should have broke that shit off with Millie. When he snuck Olivia in the closet. I'm not, it wasn't the closet, it was the hotel room. Sis didn't even drop her bag off at the hotel room. Oh. You can, no, and all he had to say is take off your clothes oh. white supremacy gotcha go ahead open Shout up your pot you open up your apple podcast app oh my god type hit the search icon type in black love matters Jesus, Jesus. you see us you're gonna see a heart black heart says black love matters it's the black heart on scroll it. on down scroll down hit type a review don't leave nothing less than a five star. <laughs> Near me tell them what to leave. No, yes. I got to let them know. Don't leave nothing less than a five star because they ain't getting read. And then go ahead, <laughs> hit that five star, and then go ahead and type something out. And we'll read it on, on, on the air. Okay. And then we also got them voicemails at 508-784-1111. So we got one review. Um, it says, sis, bro, cuz, y'all giving me life from Jump On It. Uh, 818 it says i've been listening to the both of you for the last few months from episode one now i'm on 216 all right okay. well, you got some catching up to do you yeah. don't went through a lot of motions yeah you went through all our lives oh my god i don't even think i've been back that far in a minute um so i listened on uh, on spotify and couldn't leave a review but i got an iphone as a side piece and I had to download oh, I the Apple. He, I thought he put a fist <laughs> in Olivia. What? Wait, don't put me in this. And had to download Apple Podcasts just to leave y'all a review. Thank or just you. to leave a review, review for you, Nerum. Thank you. 
Thank you. So now I don't feel guilty on Fridays. Whenever <laughs> near I'm be on his bullshit. <laughs> when you be telling people off. <laughs> you both get me through the day. It's so interesting to hear you talk about uh what is now uh the past. As I'm listening, um, as I'm listening, you are in uh, 2019 and Ooh. talking about how crazy 2018 was. And I'm like, wait until they just get to- wait. <laughs> wait. Listen, if somebody would have whispered to me, just wait till they get to 2020. Listen, <laughs> Nyambi is going to be over it and fed up. <laughs> <laughs> but God. But God, I enjoy way. being about uh being about of your journey mm-hmm. uh, through life and love the many gems that you drop. Thank mm-hmm. you for being y'all big fan. Thank Jamila. you. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. Yeah, we appreciate you. Um, the next one um is from Jim. This feels fake. Um, oh. like an alias. Um, the subject is family. It says, "Hey, y'all, I need your help. I'm 26. I live on my own, and my parents treat me like I'm a child. I really want to build a relationship with them, but it's tough. I try to have a conversation with them, but they really aren't listening to me. Um, how have you navigated your relationships with your parents over time? Any tips? Oh, near. Oh, why go to me first? Because I read it. Oh. Wow. So should we address our parents? Should we address their situation? I need your help. I'm 26, living on my own, and my parents treat me like a child. Well, you they pay will. The, they will. But also, you pay the cost to be the boss. That's why you got your own house. Right. I'm 30 <laughs> plus years old. My mama always still talking about, boy, I can still whoop you. I said, shit, try yeah. me. Try me. But what I'm getting, and it's I want to be, what I'm getting for them, because something did, does happen, mm-hmm. I, and maybe we can talk about what the, when we say however, how we navigate our relationship with our parents over time. There is something that shifts as you get older, where I do think the goal is to eventually become friends with your parents. Mm-hmm. 26 is still young though yeah so like no sheet no no heat no shade they probably do see you as a kid right. i mean you right almost at the age where you eat tide pots too for me <laughs> so it's okay just take it in stride you don't got to be your parents friend now you can just be your parents child shout out to you looks like you living on your own right keep up your weekly sunday visits your tuesday wednesday thursday calls and just go live your life as you live a little more life yourself and mm-hmm. your parents continue to live in your life i do think you'll eventually get to that point it doesn't sound like you have a horrible relationship with your parents what it says i really want to be in a relationship with them but it's so tough i try to have a conversation with them but they aren't listening to you because they don't they don't respect your authority what type of conversation like you know you're trying to give them advice that's what i'm saying they, they don't want none of your advice on living loving fucking or money no. even if you know better most likely especially if you i'm assuming you got civil rights black parents they're not gonna take it nope. i also seen this never mind i was gonna, i was gonna ask you do you want to give advice on like look what are you giving on and that way i'm tying this back to it where it was something on instagram i think they were like if i anybody i dated before 25 you're not my ex you're my childhood friend <laughs> <laughs> you only 20 cents right i, I think right. it's similar to that right like where it's just of course you can have wisdom and you can be an old soul and all those things but i'm assuming your parents maybe at least double your age so i'm assuming they're at least in their 50s or plus 50 plus mm-hmm. and they just think they think you still shit in yellow yeah no, and that's no, no don't take this personal yeah don't take that's it what i would say just don't take it personal your parents ain't your friends right because they also uh, think your the ass gonna, they also think your ass gonna come back in a couple weeks <laughs> ask yourself too if this is super like really bothering you like ask yourself like just have a little empathy i think this is the journey you take as you get older to just put yourself in your shoes so at what age would you begin to take advice from your child right again i know we want to be better and break generational Mm -hmm. curses not that i want to listen to my child but i think they got to be older than 25 for me to take any advice outside of technology mm-hmm. like from them so again i i would i just wouldn't take this personally it sound like y'all need to get a schedule routine and some expectations yeah start with some game and nights. boundaries yeah like and just Put don't take it personal box. yeah the, what box their ass out boundaries. what they gotta do with he want the relationship with them near him and how does that work with boxing them out well box them out in the sense of putting them in a box for boundaries Tell me more, because you just get you bullshitting. No, this it seems like this person's craving mm-hmm. more of a connection. So maybe one thing I would recommend, because I know I were like, no, I'll just wait it out, it, it'll come there. Just say the thing you want from your parents, right? Just say I would love to have like a different conversations with you all. Like I just really would like to work on our relationship more and just see how they receive it. Mm-hmm. 
they're going to receive it one of two ways. They're going to be like, yeah, yeah, sure. Or they're going to just blow you off. And right. if that is, protect yourself. Yep. How have you navigated your relationship with your parents over time, Neil? Uh, well, what um, tips? I think that's a little bit hard because, you know, my, my relationship with my father was always strained. So mm-hmm. never had a relationship with him, never had really had a talk with him after, what, 16? With my mom, it was a little bit different um, going to college and things of that sort. But it went from, like, her being a provider to like me pro- being a provider and shit like that and having to send money back home. Uh-huh. But also being able to say like, you know, this is where the boundaries came in and say, Hey, like, like I got my own shit. I'm trying to build my own thing. Like, this is what you want me to do. Like you yeah. got to back off and figure out a way for you as well. Yes. So I think putting those hard and fast boundaries of like, this is where I'm willing to provide. This is where I can help. And, and same way, like, this is where I need help with. This is where my skills are at. Yeah. In order to uh, move on with your life. Yeah. What um, about you? Yeah, I think um, not similar, not financially. Like, I haven't had to provide for my family or anything. Um, but I think just over time, Nero is right. Like, it's very important for you to kind of find your own way and be able to navigate through that and lean into that. As far as boundaries, I think it just depends on, like, you and your family or what you need to set up. Um, I just lost track of what I was going to say, but I'm thinking of along the lines of over time, you naturally kind of come to these moments of understanding, I think with your parents. Uh. And I think literally nothing but time and lived experiences bring you to that point. Like when you're 35, you're going to understand why your parents treated you a certain way. Now that you're 26, uh-huh. um, not that 26 year olds aren't mature. They can't hold their own, all those things, but it's just a different dynamic when these are the people who raised you and or birthed you too. Um, in their eyes, you're always going to be their child. Uh, but what I do think is as you get older to, um, I guess boundaries are important, but, I hear you even want this relationship with your parents, but you might not. This is might be an unpopular opinion. You shouldn't tell your parents everything. Like, does that? No. Is that petty? You should tell them. I would say ninety plus percent. Ninety plus percent you should share with your parents, but there's a good ten percent that you know just to. That's what you share with your partner. That's what you share with your super close friends or right. like peers or family. But I think that helps with the relationship dynamic too somehow. Um, I'm having a hard time of fleshing this out. Right, like it's just certain things. Don't get me wrong. I'm yeah. not saying hide all the bad things from your parents. Like no. that's not what I'm saying. But everything is not meant to be shared with your parents. Like mm-hmm. who you love and who you want to be fucking. Like that might not be something. No. <laughs> You need to share with your parents, right? But if you go have some questions about work, like, yes. But I, I think learning the discernment between where to bring them in on their wisdom and when to let them gleefully live in the playland that you're always going to be 10 years old mm-hmm. really helps with the, the the solidity of the relationships. I know that sounds really, really funny. It seems like it's a lot of work. It's not a lot mm-hmm. of work, though. But I think that's what has been super, super helpful because that also sets the clear boundaries of what you're willing to talk about and what you're not willing to talk about. I've also seen a lot of folks like I've had friends who like to talk to their parents like this is more relationship stuff about like they partner like this nigga did blah 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 and then that that then put a bad taste in the parents mouth Mm -hmm. and now when she back where he back with this person now it's bad petty like it's just that type of stuff and they and they always gonna ride for you Mm -hmm. right so it's gonna be that type of situation or the good side like so I think it's just being like having the discernment to keep those things in um place another thing i think you can do to continue to build the strong relationship that you want with your parents like don't center yourself like your parents literally when they had you for the most part they, their lives stopped mm-hmm. and their priority became you and taking care of you and making sure you were a human that was prepared and protected in this world the the worst the least thing you want to do now is come and be like all right i'm 25 i got this issue listen up right like that's not yeah. helpful go talk to your friends about that i would say if you're really trying to build a deeper bond with your parents or elders in your life start asking about them yeah ask them about their lives ask them about like how they were when they were younger when they were in high school um when they first fell in love like say if you are thinking about something to love instead of Mm. telling them who you love and who you want to be fucking right why don't you ask them like you know well tell me like who was your first love or who broke your heart right like you know it's ways to get pull that wisdom without centering yourself so much so i maybe that's what i'm saying like I'm not saying hide anything from your parents. I do think it's certain things you should and should not share. But I think I can zoom out. And it's just about not centering yourself True. in the relationship. It's really about 
centering your parent or that elder and digging into them and asking them the story and giving them space to show up right because they've seen you for these last 25 years 26 years you ain't seen them for these years before right they don't live two three lives before you came around and now you talking about we want to be good judy you don't know who the fuck they are they could be a cold-blooded assassin they are cold-blooded assassins you don't know nothing about that so like i guess that's my advice it's been helpful for me with my relationship with my parents that I try not to center myself. I try to take a step back and ask them how they're feeling, how they're showing up, what supports they're thinking about, like how they want to move forward. Even at the top of the year, I remember talking to my mom and she was like, well, how the new year is. And I was like, well, what goals are you setting? What you thinking about? Mm -hmm. Instead of waiting for her to ask me or me saying, these are the goals and stuff I'm thinking about. What about you right now? Then she go in mother mode. We're like, oh, these are things you want to accomplish. How can I help that compared Mm -hmm. to, I kind of put it a little off kilter. When I'm like, well, what are your goals? What right. are your hopes, aspirations, and dreams, and all those things? So what do you advice. hope to accomplish, Ma? Yeah. Fuck them up. And, and I think that, that helps will fuck them up. build that sense of friendship that you're looking for. But I do think age, time, and even with age and time, your, your parents are, or who are guardians, they're always going to see you as a child, too. So don't, I yep. want to take that. It's a lot of heels to die on. I don't know if that's the one. Exactly. Mm-hmm. All righty. Um, well, thank you for writing in. Send thank us you. any further information. Black Love Matters at gmail.com. Black when okay. Um, we got one from Janet. Mm-hmm. I hope that's a fake name. Uh, <laughs> probably not. Let's probably go. Probably not. Uh, we don't say full names. <laughs> so, Jack is hey fam. Says hello fam. This is Janet from White Ass Mid, uh, from the White Ass Midwest. I actually live in Colorado. All right. I emailed you all a few months back about various things, namely how to conquer imposter syndrome, applying to a physician assistant school, and also wanted to find a mate. LOL. I made a bad joke about uh, getting with someone who broke into my place. LOL. All jokes. Promise. I do not want that nonsense. Okay. All right. She said, uh, he or she said, says Brooke said, um, it was my birthday on the 20th. Happy Uh birthday. Happy birthday. There's a little hand clap. Uh, I turned 27. My goodness, I feel old, yet I can internally feel like I'm 16. You are young. If that makes sense. Yeah, it, it does. does. <laughs> First off, I want to say thank you for reading my email and giving me some good advice. Uh, Do it afraid is a part of my mantra, uh, mm-hmm. or part of my motto for this year. I've been in therapy for about two years and struggling with imposter syndrome and honestly. Yeah, uh, and honestly, a crippling sense of fear and living in survival mode. Yeah. Uh, this year, I'm going to reapply to physician assistant school cool. and retake my GRE. All right. I'm being uh, strategic and honest in what I need to do in order to succeed. To get where you want. Yeah, that's right, that's sis. That's all you got to do. I wanted to answer you guys' questions about if I need to apply to medical school instead of PA school. I hear you guys, and I was uh, I was committed to the journey from after school and uh, summer programs geared towards the health sciences and taking AP and college courses in high school to prep myself for college to even getting into a prestigious pipeline uh, program in undergrad that guaranteed a seat in medical school mm-hmm. in Colorado. Okay. I did it. Blood, sweat, and tears, and plenty of the discipline and, and sacrifice. Mm-hmm. Life happened in so many different ways and altered my story. Yeah. I wasn't able to finish the pipeline program, mm-hmm. but graduated with honors in 2016. Right, and I had to do some soul searching to ask myself, what did I value? Yep. Uh, what did I want my future to look like? Mm-hmm. Could I still make an impact with uh, with another path? You usually can. Um could I still be sharp and influential and still intact with the patients? Yep. Yes. Uh, being a physician assistant answered those questions for me, and I haven't had uh, regrets, honestly. Mm, I love that. But life has taken its toll. My discipline and sacrifice has been lackluster at times. You know what? All of us. Hey, come on. I literally all on the couch this, uh, Thursday all day. Mm-hmm. I settled for average, but my spirit cries for greatness. Ooh, that's mm-hmm. deep right there. I'm apprehensive to go all in, so I settle for good enough mm. and wonder if I feel unfulfilled and that my dreams are out of reach. That's the enemy talking. That is the enemy. Um, therapy has helped in many ways, namely healing from the past, but the main focus is now addressing the present. Y'all, uh, it sucks to have a dream, yet you feel like you uh, you don't have it what it takes. 
it really uh, takes a what is it? Uh, it's really a tool, tool of the enemy. enemy. Yep. At last, as as the great Maya Angelou said, "Still I rise." Still I rise like dust, honey. Ooh, like dust. Uh that must be that. <laughs> what she say? That must be God. It must be God. I'm trying not to let it get to me. Uh, I'm trying not to let it get me down completely and one of the highlights is listening to your guys podcast oh, thank you thank you guys for being authentic vulnerable and i will honestly be grateful to stumble upon uh, your podcast i will continue to check in with you all uh if you guys yes want, course, i want your yes, story you're gonna be great emails. yeah um and if you want to if you want to send up a little prayer on my behalf of your sister brother cuz or any advice that's what's up it's done so let it be. LOL, this feels like a diary, a diary entry, but I also did want to ask you all um, questions as well. Mm-hmm. You don't have to answer them, but you know you are. Uh, so questions is, have you had a dream? Have you had dreams fall or die or fall by the wayside because challenges in life? Yes. Uh, what ways do you keep yourself in check? Mm. When was the last time you felt insecure? At uh, at this point in your life, are you proud of yourself? Why or why not? Go ahead, Naomi. No. <laughs> Near, you're going to go first. I think you got more answers to me than this. Why is that? So it says, the first question is, have your dream? Have you had dreams die, fail by the wayside because challenges in life? Um, No. Mm. I, I think there are some things that I just pivoted on as far as like dreams and things of that sort. Like, of course, like being younger, I was like, oh, I want to be a professional football player. But that I thought I was like, Huh? Yeah, that's dead. Like that's dead. Mm-hmm. You know, as Uncle Junebug said, that's in the past. <laughs> you can leave it there. <laughs> leave that shit in the past. Yeah. But like other things that I've been like working on and striving towards, like some of this stuff, like I've been in this game or doing some of this stuff like since 2010, 2012. Mm-hmm. And it's been like been on it. And it has it has ingested in different ways based off like bandwidth, time, money you know, like things that we're striving for, but I was always keeping that, um, either like the, either, either as my five to nine or even becoming like my nine to five. Right. Mm-hmm. So I've always had certain dreams, uh, such as not working for the white man, uh, and having my own business and, you know, doing things that's going to impact my community, which I have done. I'm going to continue to do, but it, it, but it has shifted during times. So mm-hmm. if that makes sense. So, you yeah. know, you know, if a nigga got to get a job, nigga got to get a job, right? But what are you doing when you're not working in order to make sure that you're still taking steps towards your dreams? Because, you know, slow progress is still progress. Um, what ways do you check in with yourself? Oh, is it my turn? Oh, would you like to go? Yes, I'm a oh. cup because Nero, I'm a black unicorn. The question is, have your dreams, ha- have you had dreams die, fail by the wayside because of life changes? Fuck Yes. <laughs> Well, why you had me go first? Then? Because Nero, I guess Nero speak light. I'm telling y'all, yes, I had that shit. I done had a funeral. I had to grieve for that motherfucker. I was sad in all the things, sis, right? Like, I think I really can relate to this having this aspiration of just going towards something, right? And, and wanting to accomplish a goal. And I realized those the times where I had like these life challenges. Um, it was devastating. I think people don't acknowledge how devastating it is when your reality and your dreams aren't in alignment. And uh, similar to what Niram says, I think where the magic happens is what you do beyond that point. So at that moment, you can collapse, die, fall out on the ground, never move forward, or you can wipe your tears, you can grieve, take care of yourself, and then move on to the next greater thing. Because the secret is they don't tell you is everything that I have failed at or any time that something fell by the wayside, even what I thought it was going to be the thing I needed to do. I'm writing my ticket. I have goals, aspirations. I've did everything I was supposed to do and it didn't work out. Whatever was on the other side of that was 10 times better Mm. every single time. And I think that's a secret that folks don't tell you. But what I had to work through, sis, was letting go of this perception of what I wanted to be. Let that die and truly live in my reality. And, and, and I ain't saying that shit easy. That, that shit is full of hurt, shame, defeat. You're going to have many nights and days when you pray and cry and you pray, cry and pray, but you just got to push through it. And it, it's, you're here, right? And you just had to continuously tell yourself you're here for a reason. And 
All you have to do is put one step in front of the other to keep moving forward. Um, But I just want to acknowledge, yes, I have had a lot of things, everything from like career wise to personal wise um, Mm -hmm. that I had in store for myself. I would even say if I'm thinking about my career journey, like I never thought I would be in tech podcasting. Right. My goal was always to be somewhere else Mm -hmm. in my goal for where I wanted to be was so small Ooh, compared to where I am now. You got that 10 inch frying right? like that That's the thing, right? Like I think once um, I, I let go of that dream or that perception of it and just surrendered to the greater process and made it bigger. And I know this is getting to the next question. How do you check in with yourself? I really, when I was going through some, and I've had other moments too, like personal moments too, where I truly had, y'all know I love the Lord. And I had to surrender to a greater being, right? To know that, of course, prayer without action um, is just is dumb and nothing comes from it. But there was a greater purpose in me. I have the story's already written, basically. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? And you just have to truly lean into it and surrender and enjoy the ride and enjoy the journey. Oh, don't get me wrong. Busting your ass, working hard, doing all the things. But once I did that, it just helps the flow so much better. And like, that's how I check in with myself over that. Right. But I'm not saying don't grieve. Don't be sad over not to be sad. You're going to be. But it's truly about like pushing forward to be like, well, that window didn't work. Let me see if it was a door, a chimney, a, a, a a skylight or some other area that I can go into Mm -hmm. and like just outside of that comfort zone is where greatness happens. A lot of times our dreams and all that stuff lies in our comfort zone. Yeah. And you got to push through that. Oh, you do. Mm. Um, What was the last? So which ways do you check in with yourself? Uh, The ways I check in. Um, I would say one of the things is that, you know, me and Nia birthdays are like six or seven months from each other. Y'all are literally polar opposites. So we were like polar opposites. So like when it's my birthday, it's his mid year check in. Cancer when Capricorn, birthday, y'all. Oof. When it's his birthday, it's my mid year check in. So you know that's something that we always do. But I think one of the things that was always beneficial to me is journaling, like mm-hmm. writing your thoughts down, writing that's your feelings true. down, because it becomes so cathartic about doing that. And then, like, that's another way to, like, process and get everything down. Mm-hmm. And it drives me I'd be nuts because I have notebooks Everybody. and, like, pads of, like, my thoughts written down somewhere it, that I just won't get rid of because, like, yo, like, these things just mean it's a lot. It's a time and space. Yeah. Right. And sometimes you can't put nothing else in that notebook because it served the purpose of right. just to hold that. Exactly. I love that. It says, when's the last time you felt insecure? Child, probably last week. Shit. <laughs> When I sent and when I hit send on this damn book proposal, yeah, I th- that's a great question. I think waves of insecurity always happens, yeah. but it's about it keeps going about to. It's not what happens to you, but it's how you respond right. to it. So it's not denying these feelings. It's not denying feelings of sadness, hurt, shame, insecurity, any of that. It's about taking the time to fully feel that. But then be willing to push through because everything's temporary. That's right. another secret of the gar- gar- out of galaxy, honey. Ain't nothing permanent. Places, people, things, emotions. None of that is permanent. Right. And it's almost just if you can just hang along long enough for it not to be there anymore because yeah. it's going to go away. Yeah. And, and I think the other thing, I just lost train of my thought. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I've been doing that too. I don't know what I need. <laughs> you know, I need to get some of them uh, vitamins. Yeah. Geekaloba. What's it called? Uh, Geekaloba. Marie Kaloba, who played <laughs> undercover cops. What was that? Malik. Malik Yoba. <laughs> Malik Yoba. You got to get you some of that Malik Yoba. Um, but mm. it's the whole thing of like doing it afraid. Mm. Like insecurity, all of that stuff. Like we all have that. But the thing is, like, the difference that makes. Like that makes you from good to great is still doing it while being insecure. Yes. So like I think that's the thing, right? All the things that I'm excited about, mm-hmm. like it was still waves of insecurity, right? Yeah. Of like, hey, getting this checked in. Like I just take this whole book proposal for a minute. It's been many times I was like, ah, oh, I don't know, like this shit. I just might as well quit, and then just start writing, right? Yeah. It, it, the thing is not falling for those negative thoughts, like. Yeah. Let them come and then let them bitches go. Pass like a wave. I, I mean, pass. even this podcast, yeah. I have moments of insecurity to be like, are we really going right. here to do a podcast? Like, what are right? I, my job when I'm with like friends, like all types of things, it, it bubbles up. I think you have to acknowledge it and then work through it. It's really, it's not the 
what right like I, isn't I, we have to stop hiding these types of things in the black community right. we have to stop hiding emotions and feelings when it comes to like our mental health because it makes it so much easier because i do believe our elders sometimes put on this yeah, facade, the, the facade that they're never insecure they never know like they know what to do and that's the least from the truth mm-hmm. And I think if we've seen a little bit more of that vulnerability demonstrated, we wouldn't be so hard on ourselves. I think the main thing is the things that you need is already inside of you. Yeah. Like that's that's really the main thing. Like you're already good enough. Your story has already been told. It's already yes. written. You just got to live out, live that shit out. Exactly. Like for this physician assistant, sis, you're going to be a great phys- physician's assistant. You're going to do it. Right. Listen, if you don't do it, so what? You're going to be great at whatever you decide to do. Right. Like that is literally your story. Like whatever you decide to do, whatever you take hold of, you're going to be excellent at. Right. And, it's and, done. And the main thing is like the celebration is an application. It's many yeah. times where I've just said that, right? Like I need to celebrate that I even Did got, this. you know, had the courage to even start to write a book proposal. Absolutely. Right. And I had to like, I had to celebrate the courage to even say, Nyambi, like, let's start this podcast. Mm hmm. Like, regardless of what she said, right? Ooh. So, like, <laughs> the courage to start, like, that's that's one thing to celebrate. Yes. And I think a lot of people don't celebrate that yeah. because it's like, oh, it was nothing. Like, it was the end point is underwhelming a lot right. of times. So a lot of times, that's why people get depressed after they hit major right. milestones in career and professionally. That's why a lot of times people, um, well, more scientifically, they talk about it. In, well, this is your area, Nero. Yeah. When people accomplish big goals, like, athletically. Post marathon depression. Yeah, like so stuff like that. Yeah. Like because like or like gold medalists winning like people winning the gold medals at the Olympics, mm-hmm. they're more likely to like suffer from depression because they spent so much time yes. going all through all of this. Yes. Just for like forty seconds of their lives. So yes. think about, you know, a hundred yard dash, two hundred meters, four hundred meters, like they're running the shit in forty seconds. Yes. So like they did all of this for forty seconds and now it's gone. Yes. And they and they feel like their life is just empty. Yes. Even though they won they won the thing that they wanted to win. And you literally can copy paste that situation in so many areas. Yeah. Do it at your professional work, right? Are you doing so much in work then you finally get to where you want to be and you got all these degrees like a thermometer, don't get me wrong, me and Aaron, we got them all, but they don't really mean nothing. Mm-hmm. Right? Same thing I would say, even as I'm talking to my friends who having children and families their identity is shifting right and so all their energy is spent to just being a mother not that mother isn't a very important identity but it's just a piece of who you are it's not who you are holistically and like when kids leave go and list their business right and only call you once a week now you're mad yeah because now you don't got now your you're sad yeah now you all of that then this goes to a further point and you can't tie your identity in what you do you have to tie your identity in who you are so if all the things are stripped away that you've done for other people, you've like all those types of accolades are stripped away. What's then left? Exactly. That's what you want to celebrate in. That's where you the, the state you want to strive to be in um, when these things happen. It's not you. You are not your work. All right. You are not what you do. And we, I know we go a lot in that. So that's why I even go up against this. Since you don't become a physician, it don't matter. You're going to be great regardless. Exactly. You'll be a great person as a physician assistant. You'll be a great person that's not. And once you like live in that truth profoundly, you you glidding through life, honey. Shout out to, uh, what is the name? Gary Porter. Was no, Billy Porter, who glitted down that wall in American mm-hmm. Horror Story. Exactly. Um, then the last question, at this point in your life, are you proud of yourself? Why or why not? Yeah. Hmm. What's the definition of proud? Uh, that's what I'm saying. Like proud boys? Yeah. What? <laughs> like actually, shit, we ain't got Could you pull up? Yeah, that's what I said. Is. Let me think. Because you know me. words mean things. Not proud boys. What does proud? No. Oh, did Google just ask us? Yes, that's the fucking Google. Oh. So what's the definition there? A feeling, uh, feeling deep pleasure or satisf- satisfaction as a result of one's achievements, qualities, or possessions, or of those of someone with whom you are closely associated with. Hmm. And what's your opinion? Or showing a high or excessively opinion. No, that's not the one. I don't think I'm proud. I think I am joyful Mm -hmm. with the place I am in my life. Mm -hmm. Pull up the definition of joy. I want to make sure I'm saying the right thing. I think I'm just in a state of having joy. Yes, with, with great, great pleasure, pleasure and, and happiness. happiness. Yes, I think that's what I would describe more than um, pride. I think it is a, a state of um, just joyfulness and gratefulness because but God. 
Mm. <laughs> I never would have imagined that uh, a black girl from Detroit who's been through what she's been through that's usually a little bit too outspoken, probably swear a little bit too much, and never mind, I'm going to say something else, to be here. Mm-hmm. And this is only, this is one of the early chapters I'm going to say in my life. Yeah. You know, I'm in my 30s, so I think I got a lot more as um, what John Lewis, I got a lot more good trouble to get into. I got a lot of more shaking the tables to do. So I would just say it's just, it's such a privilege to be in a state of joy, and especially in the year that we've had with COVID to stay. All that happened. I, I joy, joy before proud, I think. Yeah. Do I have moments of pride? I have pride in like some work that I've done or some things I've accomplished. Yeah. But pride is too fleeting for me. Mm. Like, I think that sense of pride, pride is a, um, emotion that comes and goes and it's based on like things to me, but joy is something that is always underlying. Even when I'm at my saddest at the core, I still know that. I will be joyful some other day. So I think I would describe joy, that. Huh? What joy. about you? No, I, I heard you saying like, yeah, proud. I can say I'm pleased with myself. I can say I would joy myself. Absolutely. Uh-huh. Um, and I think it just come down to like, I was even having a conversation with uh, a brand's e-board. And, you know, there's asked me questions about certain things. And it's like, well, you know, where do you get all this energy from? And uh-huh. that's like adversity. Like uh-huh. it's the adversity. It's the sucky parts in life that, that gives me joy when the the good shit happened, right? Yeah, you know, it feels so. It, it, it tastes that much sweeter. It, it does, right? Yes. And I think that's the one of the things of like, I could be I, y'all could not be talking to me, <laughs> right? Like, what you mean? Where I get my energy and joy from? Like, y'all could be not talking to me. Like, I got two brothers who's dead, yeah. right? Like, best friends and got killed and shit. Live next to a crack house, yeah. You know, a crack house across the street. Like all these other things, flunked out of college, got a you know one point two GPA. Like there's so many things that that I have lived through. That the main thing is like pushing through these adversities. So you gotta use your praise as your weapon. Exactly. Come on. So I think yes. Like, am I happy with myself? Hell yeah. Because mm-hmm. shit, you know the things I've been through, the shit you've been through. Mm-hmm. Like, look at where you at now. Yeah. I can't be nothing but be pleased with myself. We've gotten through all our worst days. Exactly. And everybody can't say that. Mm-mm. Yeah. No, I love that. These are great questions. Thank you. And yes, keep us on updated on your journey. You're going to be great. Let us know where you're going, what you're feeling, the next move, all that good stuff. Yeah. All right. Do we got any voicemails or anything? There? We do. Okay. Why don't you let them know how they can find out more about that voicemail? So again, if you want to shoot us a voicemail, you can um, call us at 508 784 one 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 one. That's five zero eight seven eight four one 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 one. Okay. Wendy, Nam, hey. and Mabel. This is Dina calling from um, Upstate South Carolina. Can we y'all call? Because I just heard the news about Cicely Tyson. Oh, and I kid Too y'all not. It. The second I heard it, I said, Alexa, play love, play love back. back. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's awful though. I do. We gotta find. Oh, we gotta soothe ourselves. Oh, she is 96. Yeah. But bless her heart. Bless her heart. Bless exactly. her and her family. Exactly. Um, also, I've been listening to some of y'all's old episodes mm-hmm. going back. Um, I've been working my way slowly through them. And I got to the one where you guys were in Detroit. Oh, my God. And Which y'all's um, and Niambi's parents just plugged in the Alexa. When I tell y'all my parents did the same thing. <laughs> That's all they did. They just plugged it in. It was like, I was waiting for you. What you waiting for? I gave you the Alexa. <laughs> they gave me no instructions. I was Alexa every day. Alexis. Finally, my daddy wrote a doggone posting note and stuck it to her. <laughs> but even now, they'd be like, what's her name? And they'd be trying to wish <laughs> What's her name? What's your name? Of course, I love y'all's show. <laughs> um, We'll keep listening. Keep doing a wonderful job. Nyambi, we do need that um we do need that planner. Right? Thank you. Yeah. Um, I also need um some more Kwanzaa ideas. Kwanzaa around here is just turning into second Christmas for my kids. <laughs> I'm right there. And um oh, my goodness. something else I want to from y'all. Mm-mm. Probably something about careers. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, hit us up. Joint effort on that one too. 
So, oh, we need to give a name to that assistant because the last, I don't, I don't like calling her assistant and I don't like calling her. The <laughs> Ian. Whatever. It we is. just call her we Ann G. Call her Ann at some point. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said. We'd be stabbing because we tried to keep her identity confidential too. <laughs> so she won't, she can look at us like, y'all, yeah, I was like, y'all niggas, she's like, try me if you want. Look, try I'm me. I'm just going to ask her, like, hey, can we just say your name? No, we're not going to say her name. Well, we need to, I'm going to ask her what's her middle name. Then. What? <laughs> We should have gave her a Kwanzaa name. She should. We should have. Yeah, we we keep that on top before. Um, but no, thanks, sis, for calling. And, and you know what? Even the little moments of love bath, right? Like you gotta have these moments of joy. Don't get me wrong, Cicely Tyson, right? Woo, a legend and, and a icon in our community. Exactly. But we gotta let sis take her rest, and we have to find. Um, I'm sorry, rest. <laughs> I say rest with a K. Um, and I think the love bath bring the moments of joy. It does. Right, because every time I hear, I feel sad. Somebody going on the death angel swooping through I every feel time sad, I hear. But I also feel joy. I also feel. I always want to say pass the hen dog. I just want to say pass the Hennessy. You know what? I think we might have to do the Hennessy peach tonight. <laughs> yes. <laughs> At peach Hennessy. The peach Hennessy, y'all. No, no it's peach the peach crown. crown. Yeah. We tripping. That peach crown. Niggas just Google peach Hennessy. Peach, Hen- peach Hennessy. Now almost lost their mind. Yeah. Look, Hennessy got, got peach? peach. No, it's no, crown. crown. My Royal. bad. That peach crown royale. Tell them about it now. Oh my god, it's so smooth. It's so smooth. Oh, I can drink it just on a couple ice cubes. Uh huh. And just and a little bit of water. Yeah. That's it. If y'all looking for something nice and smooth, yeah, go get you some of that peach Hennessy. Peach I'm crown, sorry, peach baby. crown. Peach I don't crown. even drink Hennessy like that. I know. I, that's why I like to have that party because I literally can have a half an ounce of it. I literally can do like what you're supposed to do, drink right. it like, and that's all I need for Hennessy. I don't see how you niggas like drink full ass cups of lemonade in Hennessy. The Henny and lemonade is good though. It is dangerous. I was it like, you're supposed amazing. to sip Hennessy, and y'all is taking it like it's Kool Aid. Yes, <laughs> that is a problem. <laughs> I'm letting you know that right now. It is, but you know what? It's all good. To smith your black love story, oh, go to black. <laughs> to smith your black love story, go to blacklovematters.com. <laughs> to submit your question for kitchen table talk, shoot us email blacklovematters at gmail.com. To leave a comment about anything we talked about, head on over to that website. We got that sound clock and we got that voicemail at 508 784 1111. Once again, that's 508 784 1111. Talk to y'all later. Remember, love, love is, is ever evolving. evolving. Peace. Peace.